All the founding fathers knew the power of we the people. With rights for one and all under our great steeple. In unity we stand for justice and equality. Swinging to the rhythm of our democracy. Oh, the founding fathers knew the power of we the people. With rights for one and all under our great steeple. In unity we stand for justice and equality. Swinging to the rhythm of our democracy. So come on everybody, let's take a stand for the land of the free and the home of the grand with a swing in our step and pride in our hearts we're constitutionalist for liberty that's how it starts hi folks this is peter boykin and you have tuned in to hashtag go right with Peter Boykin. So, was New York's governor hiding a Chinese spy in her inner circle? We'll get to that after some other great news. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin. Our constitutional republic faces challenges from within and without. And the latest developments in the media and government reflect these struggles. You can follow also this article directly on GoRightNews.com. Let's start with CNN, a network that has been grappling with plumbing ratings. <whistles> Their solution? No, they're not committing to reporting the news fairly or upholding journalistic integrity. Instead, they're bringing back a familiar face, Brian Seltzer, a former host known for his particular bland, whoops, brand of commentary. With an election just around the corner, it seems CNN is gearing up to deploy one of their most skilled propagandists, perhaps hoping to steer the narrative in their favor. The return of Seltzer, Steltzer, or Seltzer, Seltzer Water, uh, could signal a continuation of the biased reporting we've come to expect from this network of CNN. This is CNN, the most trusted news never anymore. This is a fact-based uh, observation, but some may interpret it as an opinion based on one's viewpoint. In other news, it's been reported that President Biden has spent approximately 40% of his presidency on vacation, and we're not talking about golfing. The guy can barely walk. While the necessity of rest and recuperation for any leader is understandable. I mean, they gotta sleep. The sheer, not while they're working. The sheer volume of time away from the White House raises questions about their prioritization of leadership responsibilities. This information, reported by Fox News, is based on statistical data and presented as a factual recounting of Biden's time in office. Not made up, not an opinion, fact. Turning to a more pressing crisis, fentanyl has been responsible for a staggering 81% of overdose deaths among those under 24 years of old age. This synthetic opioid is a scourge that is taking the lives of countless, countless young Americans. The statistics speak for themselves. This is a national emergency that demands immediate action from our leaders to protect the future of our youth. In a related concern, illegal aliens make up 75% of arrests in midtown Manhattan. The influx of illegal immigrants and the impact on local crime rates is an issue that cannot be ignored. The data underscores the need for stronger border security and more effective immigration policies that prioritize the safety and well-being of American citizens. Before I go on, I'll address the issue. You'll see my eye dart over here a little bit or over there, whichever way that you're looking at the camera. 
I do have the article that I have redone, remastered, that I am reading from as a teleprompter. I know there's apps out there that could put a teleprompter on my screen, but just like Donald Trump, I like to go off the teleprompter. And until AI just figures out that I've stopped talking from the teleprompter and moved on to my own personal opinion, this is the best way I can do it. Now, I could use AI after the fact to have my eyes stare at you the whole time, but I try to give you as real me as possible. Now, on a different front, Elon Musk has confirmed the interest in serving in a potential Trump administration. Musk reply, I can't wait to report suggesting that the GOP nominee might consider him for a role in auditing our bloated federal agencies is telling. His involvement could much bring a much needed outsider perspective to the inefficient and often wasteful practices of our federal government. This is a factual account of Musk's interest and notable for its potential implications on future governance. And a more controversial revelation, a marketing firm associated with major tech giants like Facebook, Meta, and Google, eh, has privately admitted to listening in on users' smartphone microphones and placing ads based on the information gathered. We all figured that one. We all figured they were listening, right? Thought we were nuts. Have ten falls in our heads. These people are admitting. This is a clear violation of privacy and the implications for personal freedom and civil liberties are profound. While the firm's admission is factual, the interpretation of its impact on privacy rights might vary depending on individual perspectives. This is the reason why we had one of those little um, what's those, uh, Amazon Echo boxes one time years ago. We were just talking, and all of a sudden, the damn thing wanted to give us an ad for potato chips out of the blue, and then started laughing. We turned that thing off. I'm like, no, we'll just keep it in our phones, but I'm not going to have a separate device that's going to laugh at us. There's too many accounts of that thing really laughing, and people hacking it, and everything else. And a random potato chip conversation? Yeah, no. Meanwhile, geopolitical tensions remain high as the European Union continues to purchase large quantities of gas from Russia and the United States. Even as we fund proxy wars that indirectly involve these nations, between April and June, the EU bought over 12.7 billion cubic meters from Russia and 12.3 billion from the U.S., which raises questions about the consistency and morality of our foreign policies. Economics always trumps, I guess, uh, foreign policies, um, war. Yeah, it's like buy, at war with somebody, but buying their products. I mean, people talk about China, but we still buy Chinese crap. On the home front, U.S. authorities have seized Venezuelan leader Nicolas Maduro's plane for violating American sanctions. This action taken by a constitutional republic underscores the ongoing tensions between the U.S. states and Venezuela. The seizure highlights our nation's commitment to upholding international law and sanctions. And I did read something, I think I got the country right, it was like Morocco, I believe. Um, Putin visited, I think it was Morocco, I might have the nation wrong. He just visited for some gala and some other thing. And they said under international law, once he reached their soil, he should have been arrested due to the place with the EU and all the rules. And so they did not arrest him. I hope it was the right country. It might have been Morocco. It might have been another country. Um, or M M Malaya? I don't know. But you'll have to look it up. They were complaining that if they didn't arrest Putin because they were under the same guise, then what's the statement of do they actually follow the policies? I don't know. It was a lot into that one. I don't have the full information. I was kind of reading that in passing. The Minnesota, in Minnesota, we see a disturbing example of government overreach. Kamala Harris's running mate, Tim Waltz, 
once pushed COVID-19 vaccine so aggressively that he offered cash incentives to parents willing to vaccinate their children, some as young as five years old. The ethics of such coercive measures are highly debatable, and this serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between public health and personal freedom. And I'll remind people, during that time, that dark time of the C word, COVID, we weren't allowed to talk about it, just like we weren't allowed to talk about the election being stolen. They did everything to silence us, to label people as essential and non-essential employees, to force vaccines on us. We almost, I almost had to take one for my job. I waited it out. I had my things ready to do um, religious uh, exemptions even though somehow they were able to determine and reject some religious exemptions, but I can't figure out how a company or a corporate or the government can tell you that your religious exemption is not correct. I mean, I could celebrate the flying spaghetti monster that doesn't like me to take vaccinations. It's none of your business because we have the freedom of religion, our freedom without religion, our freedom from, and etc., and the government can't tell you you can and cannot. But the government did keep people from being able to gather during the whole COVID situation. And I know that a lot of preachers and a lot of priests and other things like that, they should have held their ground. They should have held church and let the government arrest them and replace them with somebody else to tell the good word. And another word and another one and another one. How many are you going to lock up? And I'm really disappointed that people did not stand up for themselves a little bit more during the COVID situation. Honestly. Now, in a significant promise, Donald Trump was told popular podcaster Lex Friedman that if reelected, he will release the list of individuals associated with Jeffrey Epstein. This is a development that many have been waiting for. Many. As the full truth behind Epstein's connections and activities remains a mystery. The implications of such a release could be far reaching. That goes for the left. You left to say, Donald Trump is doing the Epstein thing. Well, Donald Trump was on the Epstein list. I don't think he'd be releasing the Epstein list, people. And Epstein did not kill himself. Former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo is set to testify before the House regarding his handling of the COVID-19 and his controversial decision to force nursing homes to accept COVID-positive patients. Oh, I talked about this so long ago. It's an article. I know that Cuomo allowed younger people, violent people, this one particular violent person who had covid to be put in with a compromised elderly patient, that individual beat the hell out of the older person. I think they might have died. This person also had COVID because Cuomo killed people. Cuomo's actions put the death penalty on people because not only did they want people to die, they wanted elderly people on pensions to die because they couldn't afford it. Don't trust the government. Cuomo's actions during the pandemic have been subject of much scrutiny and his testimony will likely shed more light on the decisions made during that critical time. You know, that's a different time. It was a different time back then. and We were all in worried about bullcrap. Bullcrap. That's all I'm going to say is bullcrap. Alarmingly, the Secret Service failed to prevent a juvenile from allegedly entering Trump mar lago home and jumping into a pool. This breach of security raises concerns about the effectiveness of, of protections in place of our former presidents. I think it's Donald Trump's time to add his moan security even more and cannot depend on the stupid Secret Service who obviously there's people within that want Donald Trump to be killed because they're letting this stuff happen over and over and over again. Good thing this kid only wanted a dip in a pool. In Georgia, the pregnant daughter of D.A. Fannie Willis was arrested for driving on a suspended license. This is particularly noteworthy, given that her mother is currently prosecuting Donald Trump. 
While her personal actions are unrelated to her mother's legal work, the incident has drawn public attention and adds another layer of complexity to the ongoing legal battles. Finally, a federal judge has ruled that Trump's campaign must stop using the song, Hold on, I'm coming. Ooh, hold on, Ooh, I'm coming. At events, while the family of Isaac Hayes, remember Isaac Hayes? I'm gonna make love to you, woman. I'm gonna lay them down the fire. Of my big, flexy, white, black balls, or whatever, you know, South Park dude, um, pursues a copyright lawsuit. The intersection of politics and intellectual property rights is a complex legal terrain. And this case highlights the importance of respecting artistic works. Although I think if you put works out into the public domain and people pay the rights to use them, I don't think they should be able to be restrictive. I don't really think that at that time you could say, well, I don't want this used for that. I don't want this used for that. And I don't know. That's a battle to be won probably in the future. Now, in the tease, we talked about in a major story, federal officials have arrested New York Governor Kathy Hochul's former aide, Linda Sun, for allegedly acting as an agent of the Chinese Communist Party, which is the CCP. Sun, along with her husband, has been charged with violating the Foreign Agents Reg Registration Act, visa fraud, alien smuggling, and not the aliens with the green antennas, and money laundering conspiracies. The indictment alleges that the CCP ordered Sun to block representatives of Taiwan's government from accessing high-level state officials and to manipulate New York state messaging to favor the CCP. This is a significant breach of national security, and U.S. Attorney Breon Peace rightfully stated that Sun's actions directly threatened our nation's safety. Very serious stuff, folks. Now, here is the Go Right Recap Remix. In this episode of Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin, we explored CNN's questionable strategy of bringing back Brian Steltzer amidst falling ratings. Probably won't help, though. Biden's extensive vacation time and the alarming rise of fentanyl-related deaths among the youth. We also covered Elon Musk's potential role in a Trump administration, privacy concerns from tech giants, and a series of significant legal and political developments from U.S. authorities seizing Monduro's plane in an indictment of Governor Hochul's and, wait a minute, and the indictment of Governor Hochul's aid for espionage. A lot to take in. And if you missed any of it, re-listen to the broadcast. Share it. Let other people know. I try to break it down. I try to give you my opinion with a lot of facts. Trying to beat the censors, especially on TikTok and other locations. Not to try to bring you hate speech or anything else. I give you the opinion and I give you the fact that I know. And it's gathered from multiple sources. The challenges of our constitutional republic faces are numerous and multifaceted. To stay informed and to continue the conversation, be sure to visit GoWriteNews.com. And you can find hashtag GoWrite with Peter Boykin on Rumble.com at GoWriteNews, YouTube, TikTok, whenever they're not kicking me off, Facebook with Meta, and much more. If you believe in our cause, consider supporting us by donating to Cash App, which is dollar sign Peter Boykin, the number one. That's Peter Boykin one. Links are available on GoWriteNews.com and PeterBoykin.com. Thank you for tuning in, and remember to always go right. And usually I tell you to peace. Talk to you later. But... Let's give you a little bit of going away music.
in the land of the brave where the stars shine bright. We stand for freedom under the red, blue, and white with a hop and a step. We probably sing we're constitutionalists for liberty. Let freedom ring. Let freedom ring. Swing it for liberty. Dancing in the streets with the Constitution's rhythm. Feel the beat. From sea to shining sea, we're standing tall. We're constitutionalists for liberty. You know what we call. In every heartland town and city street, we cherish our rights, our constitutions beat. With a twirl and a spin, we raise our voice in this land of freedom. We make our choice, wing in for liberty. Dancing in the street with the constitution's rhythm, feel the beat. From sea to shining sea, we're standing tall. We're constitutionalists for liberty, united we call. Oh. Peace, everybody. Talk to you later. God bless.